Hey everyone, this is Daryl Evans of the 1984 World Champion, Detroit Tiger. My favorite show to be on is the Sports Circus with Big Sal. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your remaster, Sal, live from the MTV Mobile Studios here in fabulous Las Vegas. That's double MPTV. Folks, today's show is brought to you by Legal Shield, providing legal protection and peace of mind. Legal Shield can help with traffic tickets, texting and driving, DUIs, court appearances, estate planning, even contracts given to people they don't understand, plus a whole lot more. For more information, contact Legal Shield at nocourt.us. That's nocourt.us. Or email them at info at nocourt. Dot US. And a big welcome in to everybody listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast. 97.9 FM right here in Las Vegas. Big hello to everybody on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and those watching in hotels around the country and at home on television. I'm your ringmaster, Cell, joined by two-time Super Bowl champion and American Ninja Warrior, Tyrone Poole. Big round of applause for Tyrone. There he is. Yes, sir. How we doing? How we doing? Buddy, we're doing great. I see you looking nice and dapper. Awesome. You got them Super Bowl trophies behind you. You got everything cooking. Yeah, you know, we have to try to work that thing and make everything we do first class. So, you know, you got two Super Bowl trophies, uh, hard-earned Super Bowl trophies. But you got to show them off. You know, not everybody has what I have sitting behind me. Those are back-to-back Super Bowl trophies. But you know what? Listen, man, I think you got a little competition today because I think we got a little bit of that over here on the show as well. We're joined by a very special guest. In fact, we're going to let him introduce himself. Well, gentlemen, uh, I was looking at those two Super Bowl trophies, and I thought to myself, I wonder when those happened. And then when he said back-to-back, I thought, well, this must be new. This must be pretty brand new because I happen to have two Super Bowl trophies too, but I think I got mine when Nixon was president back in 72 <laughs> and 73. And the irony of that is is that the Dallas Cowboys, they were the first team to lose in the Super Bowl and come back and win. And the Miami Dolphins the next year were the first team – the second team to lose in the Super Bowl and come back and win. And now, because you got those two trophies back there, you make the third team that lost in the Super Bowl and come back and win. It's just about that little 40-year gap I'm talking about. (laughs) But nevertheless, you're in the club. Hey, I'm glad to be in the club. Glad to be in the club. All right. All right, so now I've got – Two two Super Bowl trophies here, two Super Bowl trophies over here. I have none, but I have the biggest head amongst the three of us, and that's great news. <laughs> Look at it this way, folks. I, I'm, I'm surrounded by winners, and that's what we do here on the Sports Circus. And you never know what's going to happen here, but sometimes you'll end up with a whole bunch of trophies, but you also end up with some great players. And Tyrone, you know something about being a great football player, and I think Mercury Morris knows just a little bit about yes. being a great football player, too. Now, we, we've got one on the offensive side, and then we've got one on the defensive side. Tyrone, what's it like to try to play the run against a very elusive runner? Oh, by the way, that outgained on a yards per carry guys like O.J. Simpson. I think, Mercury, you're about 5.1 yards per carry. Isn't uh, that yeah. what you averaged? Yeah. Big number. Uh, Barry Sanders at 5.0. Gail Sears at 5.0. Uh, Mercury Morris at 5.1, uh, Jim Brown at 5.2, and it was that way for about 25 years. Then this kid from uh, Kansas City, uh, Jamal Charles, uh, back in the single back era, uh, he came up and he's at 5.4. So I take my hat off to him because it's tough to get in that club uh, when there's only five guys in it. I talked to Jim Brown about maybe 15 years ago, 20 years ago, in a BET in Washington. And I told him how honored I was 
to be sandwiched in between at that time because Barry Sanders was still playing. But him and Gail Sears as being the only three backs in NFL history to manage a five-yard career. I said, look, I know I'm there because I had a great line. And Jim Brown said, hey, you was there because you was a great runner, too. They got them high-priced slaves playing the date. They gain a thousand yards, but they carry a thousand times. So I said, okay, Jim, <laughs> all about that to you, brother. <laughs> yeah, but let me ask you this. Eugene Mercury Morris. How did you get the name Mercury? How did you get the name Mercury? Wow. You know what? <laughs> That's actually on my website. Uh, where did the name Mercury come from? And it started in Texas, where I went to school at West Texas State University back uh, in the uh, mid-60s. And my sophomore year, this uh, reporter in Amarillo, Texas, he likened my style of running to the mercury in a thermometer, like the liquid you can't pick up. And then, for some reason, it, it when Life magazine came down in 1968, and they did a portfolio on my story, and... Uh, they brought the wings on the helmet and the wings on the shoes, and uh, they codified it as the, the, the Roman god of speed, Mercury, and it stuck ever since. When I got drafted uh, by the Dolphins, Joe Robbie, the owner, he handpicked me. He, he saw me playing an all-star game down there in, uh, in Miami at the North-South Shrine game down in 1968, and, uh, and they drafted him. He says, we drafted Mercury Morris. So, He's, a, he's going to be a good kick returner. He's fast. He's strong. Plus, I like his name. So that's how I ended up with the dog. <laughs> oh, like that. man. Like that. Well, what was the what was the protocol for getting into the NFL? Like right now, you know, you see the combines, you know, they run to 40, they do bench press, they do they have pro days. What was the protocol during your time to be selected or drafted into the NFL? How did they let you guys know you were drafted or, or what you had to, what did you have to do? You know what, man, as I'm listening, you unpack that time is a cumulative concept. So mm -hmm. what you're asking me, I can take you back and tell you that number one, there was no fanfare, none. They called you on the phone and said, Hey, Go over to your coach's office because you were drafted in the third round by the Miami Dolphins. And that's how I found out. Uh, there was no fanfare, no nothing. And then about two weeks later, we, the first five draft picks showed up in Miami, and we had a press conference there. And uh, that was in 1969. That was right at the end of the old AFL-NFL rivalry because that would end the, the following year in 1970. But when I got down there to, to Miami, the first five draft picks, Bill Stanfield was the number one pick, and uh, a guy named Bob Hines, two big defensive players, were from, he was from the University of Pacific, and, of course, myself and uh, another guy named Norm McBride who played for USC. Uh, the, we were the first four draft picks, and they had us in town. And I remember George Wilson, who was the coach at that time, uh, they, now keep in mind, the Dolphins were only four years old when I got there. They started existence in 1966, and uh, I got there in 1969. So that was their fourth year. So they had a history of losing, but it wasn't a long history. And I remember the coach getting up, and, and this guy, Wilson, he had coached for the Detroit Lions, and he, had, he did a pretty, had a pretty good career for a while, but he moved down here because he wanted to be in the sunshine. And plus, we were such a ragtag team that we, we had no expectation about winning. So when he, when he got up on the podium and he said, well, I'm hoping for a 7-7 seven and seven season. And I got up right after him. And now keep in mind, I hadn't played a down of football in professional leagues. And I said, Coach, with all due respect, if we have 14 games to play, then let's go for 14 and up. If we lose the first one, let's go for 13 and one. If we lose the next one, let's go for 12 and two. But let us not hang out in the bounds of mediocrity. They said, who the hell is this guy? I said, talk about <laughs> So anyway, we didn't reach mediocrity that year. We went three, 10 and one. Three, 10 wow. and one. 
But yeah. the funny thing is, you know, if you look at the amount of games, you go from 12 games, 14 games, 16 games, now 18 games, right? Yeah. But now this season, this season's kind of, I kind of like this here in our last minutes. I like the fact that there is no preseason. No, right. every game counts. Just like in college football, every game counts. And when we come back from our break that we're going to take here in just about a minute, I want to ask you a little bit about the difference between we have like a power five now, right? Where most of your, most of your NFL players come out of back when you were in college, we had a hodgepodge of, Hey, the best athlete from pick your favorite school, somehow they're going to be seen, or maybe they weren't seen and maybe they weren't taken. So Mercury, when we come back, I'm going to want you to expand upon that. What do you think? Sure. Uh, easier done than said. Yes. Cause I was part of that. Right. Well, that's the reason. Hey, listen, I, I drove through Amarillo recently and I stopped at the Big Texan, but I did not eat the 72 ounce steak this time around. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because when you said that, I went right to it with the Big Texan standing outside the, the, the deal there on the uh, with the at the, at the uh, display there with the hat on and all that stuff. Yep. Welcome to the Big yep, Texan. Yep. You, you eat it. You can have it for free. I know. <laughs> folks, we're going to be back here with Mercury Morris and Tyrone Poole. We've got four Super Bowls in the house. Folks, don't go anywhere. Last more to come here on the circus. Master Sal of the Sports Circus, join me and Hall of Fame world champion and all-star celebrity guest for chaos and controversy here on Lipson and all podcast platforms, also thesportscircus.com. Remember, folks, it's a circus and we prove it every day. Hello, Americans. It's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS or state, don't worry. I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. In today's economy, the IRS has released a variety of new rules and is offering more flexible terms to help Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. If you apply today, we may be able to lift your wage garnishments and release a freeze on your bank assets or business. Our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, they can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your IRS debt for far less than what you owe. Pick up your phone right now and call us for a free $500 IRS tax review. Don't wait. Here's the number. Call right now. 800-950-2049. For the last time, that's 800-950-2049. Can your IRA stand up to the next financial crisis that our top economists are saying is at our doorsteps? By allocating a percentage of your IRA into physical gold and silver with a tax-free rollover, you can diversify and safeguard your holdings from turbulent markets and economic downturns by putting your IRA back on the gold standard. Find out how to safeguard your assets with a tax-free rollover with a Genesis Gold IRA, the only IRA that can hold physical precious metals. Call now for your free gold and silver report. Protect your IRA today with one simple phone call and learn how to qualify for up to $10,000 in free silver. Call Genesis Gold Group, empowering faith-driven stewardship. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. Do you know someone with a drug or alcohol problem? Get help right now. Insurance may cover everything. Stop the drug and alcohol nightmare. Are drug and alcohol problems hitting you too close to home? Get help right now. Insurance may cover everything. 800-831-1560. 800-831-1560. 800-831-1560. That's 800-831-1560. And I went to throw it, and it got caught in the, in the back of my pants, and, and I swung it. The guys here at the station can see what I'm doing. Swung it like this, and, and it went across. It hit the kid in the helmet. The kid, <laughs> kid looked at me and said, now, don't go off sides again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
This is Randy Grimes, formerly of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and you're listening to The Sports Circus. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from the Amp TV mobile studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. You can see we're actually right in front of Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. What a great place. All right, folks, this segment is brought to you by Kelly Vegas, helping people create and host their very own radio, TV, or multimedia talk show. Kelly Vegas can help them with everything they need to get out of sitting in hours of traffic every day or sitting at home trying to reinvent yourself and have your very own talk show in your very own home studio. For more information, contact Kelly Vegas at kellyvegas.com. That's C-A-L-I Vegas.com. KCAA on our NBC News, CNBC Financial, and CBS Sports affiliate, all the way down to our friends down in Atlanta, WDJY 99.1 FM, all the way up to Boston, WBNW, and everybody watching on Hotel TV, YouTube, make sure you subscribe, as well as those on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for joining us here. Back here with two-time Super Bowl champion and American Ninja Warrior, Tyrone Poole, and two-time yes, Super Bowl sir. champion and three-time Pro Bowler, Mercury Morris. Big round of applause yes. for both of these guys. Four yes. Super Bowls in the house. Four. Mercy. All right. We had left off. I had mentioned something about the Big Texan and big food over in Amarillo, Texas. Let me ask you a question, Mercury. When it comes to the little schools out there, in today's time, we have the Power Five. Like the SEC is kind of like pro football today. But what about when you were drafted back in the day or when you were playing? Think about your peers going through all the years. And you say, wait a minute. We didn't have a power five back then. How did the how did the, the players get the looks from these different schools, these small schools? Right. You went to West Texas State. Right. And how did West Texas yeah. State get on the same stage, for example, as USC, UCLA? Well, actually, West Texas State was a division one school in 1968 uh, of course you know through all the gigantic aspect of college football expanding uh but we we were an independent and in 1968 we were ranked number 25 in the country uh for uh, division one football so we played utah state uh, new mexico state colorado state memphis state uh you know ohio U. um uh, North Texas State. So we kind of stayed in that state school uh, realm. Uh, be, and, and there were a lot of great fo- football players that were there at that time. And keep in mind, this is during a time when no blacks played in the Southeast Conference and only one in the Southwest Conference, and that was Jerry Levias. And uh, he played for SMU. So it was, it was not a small school at that time uh, but division one but we were a, a, a powerhouse where we were and, and we had the kind of players that, that, that coaches looked at when the the draft in 1960 uh from west texas state we had nine players drafted the year that i was drafted which was the second most players drafted uh, in both NFL and AFL at that time. So we were second behind whoever was first, and that was from West Texas State. So gotcha. we, we had a good look because people recognized the kind of football that they played then. Now, since it's diminished because talent that went to all black schools or went to other schools that were smaller, because that talent was now being looked at by everybody, then that expanded that aspect of of talent not going to West Texas State because they could go someplace else. So I was I was happy that uh, I I did go there, uh, even though that playing at West Texas was a great thing for me. Uh, I, I feel like the best shot that I got, uh, and, and I look back at it now, was com- was coming from West Texas into the National Football League. Nice. And I got now with there, all. all- I'm sorry. Go ahead. With all of your ability, with all of your ability, uh, Mercury at West Texas, did you do any other sports beside football? No, because your speed, no, you're on track. Were you on a track team? When I was in, uh, no, nah, I hated track. I could, uh, uh, cause see, I didn't like to run unless I had somebody after me. So I needed that incentive of the chase more so than being able to beat somebody. As a matter of fact, 
Dwayne Thomas, who played uh, at West Texas State also, he was in the backfield. Uh, he was a track man also. You know, he was later da- drafted by the Dallas Cowboys as their number one pick. I thought I was going to go to Dallas because Gil Brandt, the, uh, the, the director down there at that time, he made these overtures about me going there. And I was at 5'10", 190 pounds then. But Dwayne, Dwayne was 6'2", 215. And he was fast. He was smooth. He, he, when I was number one in the country in, in uh, rushing, Juice beat me out two years in a row in 1967 and 1968 at the last game of the year. And uh, Dwayne was number, number 10 when I was number one. So effectively, West Texas State had two top 10 rushers in 1968 uh, in the NCAA. Now, you mentioned the Cowboys were looking at you, right? And we've all heard about how the Cowboys, they instituted the first really like we're going to have a scouting system that is second to none. And they did a lot of things that other teams were not doing. Can Do you remember, can you give us some of the things that you remember the Cowboys doing that other teams probably didn't do when they were interested in you or – what was that scouting you know system what? like for the Cowboys? You know what, man? Let me say this generically. Time is a cumulative concept. So when you're asking me this, I'm going back to that time and seeing it in my own mind. And yes. I can tell you how you perceive it now. You're asking me based upon how it was for you or how they do it now. Back then, there was none of that. All you did was you played and they looked at your films and they determined whether or not you were going to play. There was no combine. There was no running to see how you were. You showed up as a football player. And then based upon where you were in college, and they looked at your college films And they made a determination based upon that. That's why uh, when Life Magazine came and did a piece on me, put the wings on the helmet and the wings in the shoes in 1968. And uh, Gil Brandt said that I think Morris is going to go probably in the first round. Uh, And if it would be anything, it would be about question about his size. But he's he's, he's surely to go in the first round. And that was Gil Brandt. So I actually thought I was going to go in the first round. And then I ended up in the third round. And they, the Cowboys picked Calvin Hill, who at that time was an unknown big, big guy from, from Yale. And uh, Calvin Hill was the prototype back. So was I, when I was coming into the league, there weren't any backs that were 5'10", 190 pounds. There were uh, Larry Zonka at 6'2", 235 pounds. And then we'd grow to 240 pounds, 240 pounds. And those types of runners, because uh, the, the prototype at that time in the NFL was Paul Horning and Jim Taylor. Paul Horning, 6'2", 215. Uh, Jim Taylor, 6'1", 230. And so when I got to Miami, the Jim Kick, uh, who was a great player, uh, from Wyoming, he was 6'1", uh, 215, and Zonk was 6'2", 235, and then 240 until Shula put a weight restriction on the guy. So w- w- we had a different set of circumstances, and I actually had to work my way in to show them that the three, four yards in a cloud of dust uh, sometimes is not going to make it. Now, the AFL... They were drafting smaller, faster backs. And so the implementation of speed at that time wasn't as much in the backfield as it was as a receiver, which is why you see Bob Hayes uh, and did such a great job, and he was from Florida A&M. So the, the whole concept of what people were looking for at that time, it changed over the years and evolved because of the one because of integration in and then certain players got an opportunity that they otherwise would not have had because they would not have gone to Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, or LSU. So at my time, when I went to, to, to Miami, no blacks 
uh, had played in the SEC. And I had guys that were on my team my rookie year that they were from Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, or LSU. And none of them, there were black players who never played against anybody white and white players who never played against anybody black. And that was 1969. So it was a different wow. scheme right, so of things. Then, and they looked at it totally different then. Mercury, when we come back, I want you to talk a little bit more about that, but also want to talk about the, the merger, right? So a lot of people don't really know the history of that. And I want you to kind of give it from your depiction, from your point of view, because people are still kind of cloudy. What is he at this AFL, NFL thing? So I'll tell you what, when we come back from break, we're going to be back here with two-time Super Bowl champion. That would be these guys. <laughs> I was going to say Tyrone Poole and Mercury Morris back here in a few minutes on the circus. Don't go anywhere, folks. Hello, Americans. It's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS or state, don't worry. I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. In today's economy, the IRS has released a variety of new rules and is offering more flexible terms to help Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. If you apply today, we may be able to lift your wage garnishments and release a freeze on your bank assets or business. Our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, they can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your IRS debt for far less than what you owe. Pick up your phone right now and call us for a free $500 IRS tax review. Don't wait. Here's the number. Call right now. 800-950-2049. For the last time, that's 800-950-2049. If you have diabetes, listen up. If you have insurance, you can qualify for a continuous glucose monitor. With a CGM, you can continuously track your levels and trends and spend more time in range, significantly lowering your A1C. More importantly, a CGM eliminates the one thing most people with diabetes hate, painful finger sticks. Order your new continuous glucose monitor today. If you use insulin and if you've seen your diabetes care provider within the last six months, you may qualify for your own CGM right now. We'll do all the insurance paperwork and deliver your new CGM at little or no out-of-pocket cost to you. Medicare and most insurances will cover your CGM, so don't wait. Have your insurance handy and call the Aptiva Medical CGM Health Hotline right now. 800-320-2751. 800-320-2751. 800-320-2751. That's 800-320-2751. If you're tired of the fake news and tired of all the left-wing BS and agendas out there, if you want to do your right part to clean out the swamps and hit the lefties where it hurts, their pocketbook. We all know the president and his cronies hired thousands more IRS employees and agents. Now that's not very American. There's a way to fight back. Fellow conservatives out there, call American Tax Relief. They can help you pay less to the IRS. Don't you give a penny more to spend to the left-wing agendas. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes or haven't filed your taxes in years, call my friends at American Tax Relief. They'll give you a 100% free introduction to their program. And trust me, they're on the right side of your freedom. Pay the IRS less. Call now. 800-958-2157. 800-958-2157. 800-958-2157. That's 800-958-2157. Paid for by the tax doctor. Do you know someone with a drug or alcohol problem? Get help right now. Insurance may cover everything. Stop the drug and alcohol nightmare. Are drug and alcohol problems hitting you too close to home? Get help right now. Insurance may cover everything. 800-831-1560. 800-831-1560. 800-831-1560. That's 800-831-1560. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, of the Sports Circus. Join me and Hall of Fame world champion and all-star celebrity guest for chaos and controversy here on Lipson and all podcast platforms. Also, thesportscircus.com. Remember, folks, it's a circus, and we prove it every day. 
You're listening to the Sports Circus, and I'm Mike Golick. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from the MTV Mobile Studios here in fabulous Las Vegas. That's double A M P. TV. This segment brought to you in part by the American Business Trust Company, helping companies with strategy, sales and marketing, capital resources, and establishing companies with physical locations or on the internet. For more information, contact the American Business Trust Company at 657-600-1876. That's 657-600-1876. Or check them out online at abtrustco.com. That's A-B-T-R-U-S-T-C-O, abtrustco.com. And welcome back, everybody, listening in on Magic 97.9 event right here in Las Vegas and our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from Coast to Coast, Hotel Television, also those watching on regular television across the country as well, and those streaming at thesportscircus.com, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and everywhere else. We are joined by two-time Super Bowl champion and American Ninja Warrior Tyrone Poole and two-time Super Bowl champion and three-time Pro Bowler, that'd be Mercury Morris, a part of that perfect Miami Dolphins team. Welcome back. All right. So in the last segment, I asked you a little bit about the AFL. I want you to talk a little bit about the AFL and the NFL. A lot of people don't really know what happened. What was this AFL? Why do we have two leagues? And we're talking a long time ago. Why do we have two champions? Give everybody a quick synopsis of what happened. I think that that was part of what the the times that created this because there was so much talent out there, but some of the teams like the the major teams, the SEC teams, the those teams, they did not have the types of players in general that they have now because that opportunity to play wasn't available to them. So there was a pool of players from the smaller schools, from the black colleges and whatnot, that would not get the kind of recognition that the larger schools would get. The schools are more popular and, 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 and big, but nevertheless, they all went into the same place. So in, in the NFL is 100 years old where in 1960, the AFL began, and uh, it was a fledgling league, but they they kept getting players from away from the NFL, and there's the success of the, of the AFL was primarily based on the fact that the players who normally wouldn't get the kind of opportunities that you would get in the NFL, what, they now had it in the AFL. And so that's how the parity became so quickly uh, a, a thing where the equality of the players uh, was was consistent with the type of play. And plus, the AFL had a more wide open range of, of, uh, of talent than the NFL. The NFL had a basic product, which was four yards in a cloud of dust and pass the ball every now and then, but it was basic, you know, hard-nosed football. Whereas the innovative aspect of the AFL and what they did and what they tried to do and the collective concept of competition that the NFL had with the AFL was genuine because the types of players that they were getting were as good or better because they had a greater field to choose from at that time. Okay, one quick question before we go to Tyrone. I want to know is because right now we have the Power Five Conference or the Power Five Conferences. And now with these Power Five schools, we're kind of seeing a similar thing where these players are herded into the NFL and you've got the group of five and everybody else. Is it possible that you could see everybody else at the group of five, so to say, maybe go to another league? You may have another situation just like what you're talking about right now, Mercury. I think no, because these people have a lock on it. From a tradition standpoint, you got to remember that whatever you have now embedded into the concept of tradition is already set. So people aren't looking outside the box to find other aspects of professional football because the teams that are playing now, they all want their chance to get to the top of the crown and have some Super Bowl trophies back there with them, uh, and uh, which is obviously the goal. But moreover, The competition, so it depends on when it started. The the NFL was so dominant, but as the 60s started to end, 
then you saw that dominance go away. And you saw Kansas City beat Minnesota. And you saw the Jets beat Don Shula in the, uh, in the Baltimore Colts in the Orange Bowl, which I was at that game in Super Bowl three, And I uh, was up in the nosebleed seats. But little did I know that 30, 30 days later, I would be drafted by that team. And 45 days later, the guy who was about to be fired from the <laughs> – from the Baltimore Colts for not beating the upstart 10 year old New York Jets and Joe Namath. Plus Shula put that, that paper on the, 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 the as they always do, they put that paper up says Joe Namath de- guaranteed a victory. Now that even more made, made the, the old guard mad because they do these upstart guys coming up here talking about, uh, they're going to be able to beat us. And they did because the style of football that they play is the beginning of the evolution of the style of football that you now see now, that you see now. The, the complicated aspect of the game is played with the mind now. Back then, it was the basic law of nature, which is fight or flight, and that happened every 30 seconds. You had a different concept of moving a man from point A to point B against his will, and that was the basis of how we did it back then. And then Shula, he took that old guard that he he won with it, but he never got to the point where he won the championship because he had never won a big the big game. He had lost in the against the Browns and he had lost uh, against uh, Namath. And then we lost against the Cowboys. And that was a beginning right there. The, the differences in the league, but at the same time, it was a beginning for the equality of what it was because when Shula came, he introduced to us a new type of play based upon the players that were there. So he didn't bring with him the the Tom Maddy, Johnny Unitas concept of playing. He brought with him his style of utilization of the kind of talent that he had to make sure that we did one thing, that we won. And that was the most important part. So here's Shula jumping from the old NFL into the old AFL and then making it now the AFC. So it became basically a new product. And particularly with the way that the the AFL had risen so quickly in being able to actually compete with, with the NFL. Now, you know, Green Bay, they kind of spanked the AFL, but after that, it began the ascent to parody that you see right now. Coles, we are here with Mercury Morris, one of the fab three in that backfield of the Miami Dolphins. Now, Mercury, I want to ask you about that 72 Dolphins team. What was so special about that team? Today, to this point in time, you guys are still the only defeated NFL team. A lot of teams have come close, but you guys are still on top of the mountain. What was so special about that 1972 undefeated Dolphins team? You know something, when you said that, a little bell went off in my head because the late John Johnson just passed away a little while ago. He asked me this question uh, after New England went down in flames against the Giants. And uh, he said, he said, uh, tell me, uh, since New England got so close, uh, how would you? I said, first, define close. He said, well, they got all the way to the edge and then they, they fell off. I said, OK, you said it, not me. You got you to gotta win the last game in order to get there. I said, now, the reason why I know that is because we got beat in that same game, and then Shula used that as an impetus for us to come back the next year and and beat everybody. But, see, that was the youngness of the team. When when you have a circumstance like what we had there with regard to the talent that was there and the innovativeness that Don Shula brought to a time – when you didn't, you, it was that three yards in a cloud of dust business that the NFL still was embarked in. But the AFL added that aspect of fast receivers, big Otis Taylor and, and all the guys from the Chiefs and all these things that made the game more exciting and made the, the innovation of, of the offense. How Shula, when we went to the line, we went to the line with two plays and the ability to get out of that depending on what they saw. 
So it was either Zonk was going to run a sweep to the right or I was going to run a sweep to the left. If Warfield was uncovered, they're going to snap out and get out of that and throw that ball to Paul Warfield. So in other words, we were taking advantage of every aspect that we saw as weaknesses, and that came from the game plan. So no longer was it that, well, we'll just muscle these guys out of there. It was how do we sophisticatedly play these people? Paul Warfield would study the defensive back and find the weakness in the guy and then play that. You see guys running down the field now, and they make a little couple of juke moves, and they think that's it. Warfield, he would watch the films and to see how many steps it took to sell this guy that he was going inside and his minute he bit on going inside, he'd go outside. That's why you saw Paul by himself all the time. So I'm saying that we had innovation and the talent, and that was the AFL, which was really the AFC. But that's how we became successful. Mark, Mark, we're going to finish up with that. We'll be back with more Sports Thirties. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 That's 702-799-9935 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com Hello Americans, it's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS or state, don't worry. I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. In today's economy, the IRS has released a variety of new rules and is offering more flexible terms to help Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. If you apply today, we may be able to lift your wage garnishments and release a freeze on your bank assets or business. Our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, they can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your IRS debt for far less than what you owe. Pick up your phone right now and call us for a free $500 IRS tax review. Don't wait. Here's the number. Call right now. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. For the last time, that's 800-950-2049. Can your IRA stand up to the next financial crisis that our top economists are saying is at our doorsteps? By allocating a percentage of your IRA into physical gold and silver with a tax-free rollover, you can diversify and safeguard your holdings from turbulent markets and economic downturns by putting your IRA back on the gold standard. Find out how to safeguard your assets with a tax-free rollover with a Genesis Gold IRA, the only IRA that can hold physical precious metals. Call now for your free gold and silver report. Protect your IRA today with one simple phone call and learn how to qualify for up to $10,000 in free silver. Call Genesis Gold Group, empowering faith-driven stewardship. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. That's 800-932-5517. Do you know someone with a drug or alcohol problem? Get help right now. Insurance may cover everything. Stop the drug and alcohol nightmare. Are drug and alcohol problems hitting you too close to home? Get help right now. Insurance may cover everything. 800-831-1560. 800-831-1560. 800-831-1560. Uh, yeah, comes down to him at a halftime, and he tells me, he says, Nels, you got to do us a favor. He said, what's that? He said, you're supposed to be keeping your eyes on the field, not looking at all the women in the stands. He said, the GoPro <laughs> not doing us any good. What about what you're looking at? You know? <laughs> we- 
You're watching the Sports Circus, and I am Brian Erlacher. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from the FTV Mobile Studios here in fabulous Las Vegas. All right, and a big welcome back to everybody listening in on Magic 97.9 FM right here in Las Vegas and our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast, as well as those watching on hotel TV and televisions around the country right there in your own homes. And a big welcome in to everybody else streaming on YouTube, Facebook, thesportscircus.com, and Twitter. Make sure you like and subscribe as well. Back here with two-time Super Bowl champion Tyrone Poole and American Ninja Warrior, as well as two-time Super Bowl champion and three-time all our pro bowler, we'll say Mr. 5.1. Mr. 5 <laughs> yards, 5.1 yards per carry. That would be Mercury Morris. And Mercury, let me ask you a question. I'm going to pick up here. I want you and Tyrone to have this dialogue because we have a great cornerback in Tyrone Pool with us. We have a great running back. And you were talking about Paul Warfield in the last segment studying those corners on defensive backs. And he would study them to the point where he knew where they were weak, just like a lot of players will study film. But I want to know from your standpoint, you take a guy like Tyrone over here. That's he's just won a couple of himself. Right. And he knows what it's like to play on great teams playing for Bill Belichick. Something tells me you're in the right system playing for Don Shula. Something tells me you're in the right system. Compare and contrast you two between the offense and defense of great coaches and how they counteract one another when they face off. Go ahead, go Mark. ahead, man. You want me to go? Yes. Well, it's it's it was first of all you got to understand it was a different time and a different concept of how football was played. And Shula brought in the innovation of how to take the weaknesses or the strengths of other players who played against us and turn them into weaknesses. And he had the ability through game film, watching uh, what, what guys love to rush hard, what guys would lay back as, as, as defensive backs. And we utilized all that information in order to come up with a game plan that would facilitate what weaknesses we encountered uh, to build a game plan each week that we would go out and implement on that Sunday. So it was more like a test. You know, I see the guys today, they they get all hepped up and they're like, hey, we're gonna get them, we're gonna get them. All right, let's go, it's our house, they don't come to our house. And, and, yet, and, that, and the players are inside of there. But with Shula, Shula was in the middle of that. And it was very simple. In the middle, before the game, put his hand in, start talking about what, don't make mistakes, Go down and make the good coverage, and then doing all the things that we're supposed to do. In the morning meeting before the game, we would he would give us the first three plays of every game because he wanted to make sure that as a running team that we manage the football in a way that we could control the game by controlling the amount of time that we utilized because we were a running team. And, and with that running team, you had Jim Kick and, and Larry Zonka and myself. So we had a game plan and, and the kind of linemen that could execute in a way to where we could keep the football for six, seven, eight minutes. And so if you didn't mount a drive against us, then you may get the football in the first half, maybe seven or eight times, uh, uh, maybe 10 at the most. But there were times when a team just didn't get the ball because we'd mount a seven, a seven minute drive and then come back, they go three and out. And then we mount another six minute drive. So in other words, we kept control of the game. And that's, and that was out of Shula's ability to take the offense and, and tool what he saw in the game films and utilize that to, to, to our advantage. Now, today, they, they have, a, from what I see, it's a different perspective. But in analysis, when I was in Pop Warner, the plays were very simple. A1 was to the right, and B1 was to the left. And then when I got into junior high, it was 28 to the right and 29 to the left. Then when I got into senior high, it was toss 28 to the right and toss 29 to the left. Then when I got into college, it was toss 28 crack back to the right, toss 29 crack back to the left. 
Then when I got in the pros, it was I right, shift to double, motion to flood, toss 28 or 29 crack, crack back, check with me at the line of scrimmage, which is still A1 to the right and B1 to the left. So it just, that it evolves, but yet it's a very simple process that we took the, the, the strengths, as I said, of other teams and turned them into weaknesses, which is what our advantage was at, at that time. Now, in 1972, we were number one in offense, number one in defense, number one in special teams, fewest giveaways, most takeaways, least penalized, scored the most points, gave up the least, ran seven out of every 10 times in a league that ran three every five times. Broke the rushing record that year, falling 40 yards short of 3,000 yards rushing and 2,000 yard rushers, first time in history. And we had a starting quarterback who got his ankle broken, Bob Greasy, and the guy who replaced him, Earl Morrill, was throwing touchdown passes back in 1957 when I was 10. And we really got is that that's how sure in his genius was able to motivate players who were formerly three ten and one into a team that in, in that particular era we had the best team in the NFL history of anyway. All right. All right. So let me ask you this question. When we look at the running game of today, we s I, I'm seeing a migration, in my opinion, just as a a fan of football. I never played football, I'm a but Pee Wee football. But what I'm seeing is a transition seemingly back to that balanced running attack. In fact, I'm seeing a little bit more run with certain teams. We'll see the two-headed monster, for example. Your team had the three-headed monster at running back, right? That could run the ball. And plus, oh, by the way, you had some guys that could throw it, and you had some guys that could catch it, too. Mercury, are we going to see a little bit more of that as we move forward? Maybe a little bit more time consumption on the clock? And after you answer that one real quick, I understand you have a book. I want to talk about that real quick. I just think that now, it's a, once again, it's a different time, different types of coaching, different types of goals in, in order to maintain uh, a dominance uh, in, in, in play at that particular time. Game plays are so important now. Right. Okay, so... Let me, let's go to Tyrone. And Tyrone, when you think about the different running games that are out there today, even when you played just a handful of years ago, back to when Mercury played, did you see much the same where maybe there was a transition from pass heavy to run heavy? Are we kind of headed back towards a more run type of offense? I mean, we see some great quarterbacks that are coming out, but we need a little more running in the game, don't we? Well, you got to play towards whatever the rules allow you to play. Uh, that's basically what you got to do. The game now is to throw the ball. So, yes, running still plays a part, but the rules dictate that you throw the ball. Do You have more wide receivers. Every offensive set has three or more wide receivers. And, again, all that is just if you understand sports, understand football, the more you can remove people from the box, the box, when I speak of the box, means between the tackles. That's the box. The more people you can remove from that area, then you're able to, like you mentioned, possibly run the ball more effective. So I don't think the game is going to be a downhill running style no more. Because if you the more you bring people in, the more well, the more you condition your offense, the more you bring people into the box. So it stifens the running game. You probably only going to see goal line types of offenses kind of what you're talking about if you want to pound it you probably see them on the one yard line pound it but the game and the rules the game is built from the outside in now this day and age no more from the inside out all right real well, quick mercury i want to ask you before you jump in there i want to ask you because we only have a few minutes left of the segment i want to ask you a little bit more about the book and i know that tyrone had already mentioned it previously but let's get into that for the last few minutes tyrone what was it that you wanted to go into as far as Mercury's book? No, you just said it, Sal. Uh, Mercury, you got a book. Uh, tell everybody about your book and, and everything that you're trying to do in the communities with it. 
Well, you know what? <clears throat> I wrote this book back in 1986. So this is like 2020. So well, times are different. Things are different then. But I wrote a book. It's called Against the Grain. And um, I don't know if you can see it there. There it is right there. Uh, hold it. Anyway, anyway, let me put it this way. You're going to be able to go to my website, which is Mercury Morris Media. It's not open right now, but it's going to be open in the next 10 days. And in there, I have pretty much the, the, the history of not only Mercury Morris, but also of the 72 Dolphins and, and the success that we had back then. And some reasoning, and including the, the, the much respected New England Patriots, because I can only, people ask me, man, are you glad that New England lost? I said, why would I take my my time to hinge and be against a player? If they're good enough to win, they're going to win, whether I want them to or not. And sitting in this position of being the, the only team in 100 years to do that, I, I feel that that's an accomplishment. And I tried to put that the, the history of me and that team in my book. And, and also the things that I, I do now, I, I'm a, an advocate for retired players. Um, I, I think we should, we, we should have the kind of things that are necessary in terms of improvements in our benefits that reflect the foundation of the game. You ever see a house without a foundation? No. So we, we should reflect that in terms of the monetary value of our benefits. It should have been like a blue chip stock that we would get when we played that in our old age, we'd be getting the benefits of having played in the NFL. But instead, from 1993 on, they cut us off. And so that's pretty much what I have, have been in a fight for for the last five or ten years for, for, for parity in the great success that the NFL has made. We think well, we should be getting our cut of that than the old timers. Well, I agree with you 100 percent. And I think this new CBA uh, that was just recently signed that the older guys, the foundation of the NFL, you guys will start to see a change. So a lot of great benefits have come out of this new CBA. So I am 100 percent for you guys. I know that I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for people like yourself, Mercury Morris. So I thank you for joining us on today's show. Good luck on your book, man. Positivity, positive vibes in everything exactly. you do. So from exactly. myself, Val, the Sports Circus, to everybody listening, watching, see you next time. You got it, man. Remember. Hello, Americans. It's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS or state, don't worry. I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. In today's economy, the IRS has released a variety of new rules and is offering more flexible terms to help Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. If you apply today, we may be able to lift your wage garnishments and release a freeze on your bank assets or business. Our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, they can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your IRS debt for far less than what you owe. Pick up your phone right now and call us for a free $500 IRS tax review. Don't wait. Here's the number. Call right now. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. For the last time, that's 800-950-2049. If you served in the Marine Corps, by now you know about the contaminated water problem at Camp Lejeune. If you were stationed or worked at Camp Lejeune from 1953 to 1987, you probably have a lot of questions. We have some answers. You could be entitled to compensation, Billions of dollars are being allocated to pay for damages to anyone stationed at Camp Lejeune during that time. Unfortunately, it appears that officials may have known the contaminated water problem existed and did little to protect their men. The Semper Fi Code was not honored. If you or someone in your family has developed a serious illness, including various forms of cancer, call this Camp Lejeune legal support line right now. You can't turn back the clock and change what happened, but you can certainly call right now and learn your rights as a Marine. Here's the number. Call 800-335-7196. 800-335-7196. That's 800-335-7196. Paid for by Legal Alert Line.